Hi everyone, welcome to our Lava tutorial. So, one thing that I forgot to mention on the last tutorial is to set the game mode of the level to third person game mode. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the world settings right here and you're gonna go to game mode and instead of none, you're just gonna make sure the third person game mode is selected over there. Perfect. Now we also don't need this character anymore so we can just get rid of him. Awesome. So let's create, um, before we actually um, begin our lava material, let's just create a simple cube or a simple little plane right here that is going to serve as the starting point of our character. So I can just drag the cube around. I'm going to scale a little bit. It just serves like a platform so the character can start somewhere. There you go. I think... This is a good enough level. Maybe I'll just decrease it a little bit. Perfect. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit create and I'm going to grab our player start right here. Let's just make sure that it we press end so it snaps with the terrain. Perfect. And if we hit play, we're going to start right here. As you can see, it's a little bit. Um, the camera is actually overlapping a little bit. So let's move this rock backwards and let's push this player a little bit to the front and there you go we have a great starting scene as you can see there's a couple of holes here in the scenario so let's fix that by adding some of the other rocks that we have there you go so it looks like it's immersive on some sort of rocky terrain perfect so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab all these rocks that are right here in the world outliner we're gonna organize them by grouping them together so we're gonna select them all and we're gonna, so you're gonna right click, and you're gonna say move, move to, create new folder. And let's type in rocks. Let's minimize them so they're all organized here. And if we need to mess around with them, we can just do it here. Perfect. All right, looking good, looking fresh. So what we're gonna do now is work on our lava. So now we need a lava plane. So basically a lava plane here that will have the lava texture that it's going to cover the ground. So let's do that for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our create button right there, go to shapes and let's go to plane. So here we have our plane. So let's scale this up by a lot. So it covers the entire scene. Let's press W and let's gently put it down just a little bit above the ground. This is great. Perfect. You know, you can, Adjust here by using the scale tool again. Just decrease a little bit the size, press W and drag it. This should be good. This should be really good actually. So now we're gonna start creating our lava material. So again, make sure you have the you have all the starter content um, prepared here that comes with the level. Um, and you should have all there. So if you created the project correctly. If not, you can just add it back again um, just by pressing the add button. But cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new folder called materials. Double click it. We're going to create a new material. So right click material and let's name it lava. Awesome. So let's double click in our lava material. Cool. So on our lava material, what we're going to do now is import some of the textures that we're going to be using for the lava. So let's open the content drawer. Let's press content and let's search for fire. And we can also use this filter right here so it only shows textures. Perfect. So we have the fire tile tiled right here. Let's drag this. And we're also going to use a basalt normal map to make the lava effect. So let's search for basalt. So rock basalt. So we just want the normal map right now. Perfect. Now you're going to um, duplicate this lava texture because we're going to need two lava textures to create a kind of like motion um movement to the texture so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna connect normal texture to our normal and we're gonna hold off on the other ones for now so let's go ahead and start um adding the scaling nodes right here as you learned in the previous tutorial so let's add a texture coordinate and i actually want one texture coordinate for each one because i'll be um changing the settings on one of them so let's duplicate duplicate in the middle one right here, we're going to change the UV tiling to 5. 
Perfect. I think that's good. And let's grab our multiply nodes. So let's duplicate using control W. And let's add one constant of scale. It's going to be our universal constant. So let's convert to parameter scale. Let's connect that to all the B nodes of the multiplier because we're multiplying that. Perfect. Let's add the texture coordinates to the A section. Okay, looking good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get a panner. And what the panner allows us to do is to actually move the texture using our coordinate function. So we're going to grab three of those and we're going to connect the result of the multiplication to the panner coordinate. And each of them will be connected to our texture sample. Cool, cool, cool. So let's um, let's hit apply right here just so it renders here the, the preview. Oh, I forgot to set our scale to the default value. Let's say, let's say two for now. And then I hit apply again. I actually just want this to preview. So as you can see, I want the preview to be happening. So I can real time see the scaling of this changing. So as you can see, this one is a lot smaller and the vertical is wrong is not the same as the horizontal axis. So let's just click back on our texture coordinate that it's related to that. And let's change the V tiling to five, two. And that way, if you unplug this coordinate and then you plug it back in, there should be, should be the same texture, but yeah, reduced it by a lot. Perfect. And let's do the same here for the normal map, just so we can get a preview of what's looking like. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our multiply. And we're going to grab another constant using selecting one and pressing. And this is going to be the brightness of our lava. So we're going to convert this to parameter. It's going to be our brightness. And this is just going to take from the RGB of this um, texture and the brightness for B. Perfect. We also want to add another multiply node right here. And I'll explain why in just a second. And we're going to connect the multiply in our emissive color. There you go. As you can see, the lava just started to take um, a lot more shape. And let's set the brightness, of course, to 5. Much better. You can see all the colors flowing. And it's looking nice. It's looking nice. So for our panels right here, so the texture can actually start moving, we're going to set the first one to let's say 0 0.007. We're going to set the second one to about 0.1. And we're going to set our last one to 0 0.01. Oops. And also, it's always the speed X, so we want it to move on the horizontal axis. Perfect. And if you want to change the rotation, you just add a negative in front. Um, and that should do it. So right now, as you can see, the lava is moving. The normal map is moving on different speeds. And this, our other texture is actually moving on another speed too, which works greatly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the red um, of our normal maps and the red of our bottom texture. And we're going to add them together. So we're going to select an add here. So before we add right here, we're going to add a lerp, which is the linear interpolation. Where is it? right here and we're going to set our a value to minus one and our b value to 1.8 we're going to connect the red to the alpha and we're going to connect the output to add and this add right here is going to be the one connecting to our multiply and as you're about to see our texture has now this mask with the basalt and that's what we were working on right here and it looks really really good so let's apply this and let's click save. Now let's see how it looks in our planes. Let's open our content browser. Let's select our plane. And let's search for our material called lava. And let's drag, a, drag it on the plane. And as you can see, it looks gorgeous. And the lava moves. As you can see, there is one that is moving super slowly. The other one is moving fast. And the black here kind of like... Um, gives the impression like magma or like the lava that is already a bit dry. And yeah, this actually looks good. Awesome. So before we go, let's go ahead and turn the scene into nighttime so we can actually see how it's looking. So let's press Control L. 
let's drag it all the way down and as you can see this is looking fantastic so let's hit play and as you can see it actually looks like we're in the middle of a volcano or something like that yeah it's it's looking pretty good i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'll see you in the next one